Hey everyone, in this video, let's talk about ChatGPT and compare it with Grok. In order to do so, here we are with ChatGPT first of all. And if you're unfamiliar with ChatGPT, it is an AI chatbot where you can basically ask any question you wish and have engaging, interesting conversations about pretty much anything. And uh, at this point, ChatGPT has been one of the industry leaders when it comes to AI chatbots, and uh, it's really quite dynamic. So what you can see here is first off, this is where you can just start chatting with ChatGPT. And on the left-hand side, you're going to see your different conversations that you've had. If you wanna start a new conversation, then you can just click on the new chat button here. And uh, the nice thing about ChatGPT and what I would say is probably the most significant difference between it and Grok at this point is the fact that ChatGPT has a memory of your different conversations and that memory will carry over into different conversations. So if you're talking with ChatGPT about something in a different conversation and then you start a different conversation elsewhere, then ChatGPT can refer back to your previous discussions. And so you can really have a tailor-made conversation there that can be quite engaging and interesting and uh, it's uh, it's it's something that's really quite uh, potent. Uh, I've spent some time with it myself. I think that I've spent more time with ChatGPT than anything else, uh, but I have spent some time with Grok as well. And um, let's just point this out here really quick before we move on to Grok. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just go into our settings here so that you could see for yourself. If we go to the personalization uh uh, option here in settings, then you're going to see the memory option and you can toggle that on or off. You can even clear your memories or you can go into manage memories and you can uh, clear some of those out if necessary. Um, depending on the subscription level that you have, if you're using the free version or if you're using the subscription uh, version, then that will determine how much of a memory ChatGPT will carry over. So that's one limitation that's important to point out. But generally speaking, so, you know, you can come here into manage basically and you can uh, delete any specific things that you want uh, ChatGPT to forget if for whatever reason you don't think it's uh, important or whatever your reasons might be. Um, this is a little bit different from Grok because if you go here to X, and we're just going to click here where it says Grok. And you can begin having your conversation with Grok. Now, there is a history option. So if you click history here, then it will have a uh, history of your conversations. But the thing about Grok that to me stands apart is that um, it doesn't have a memory of your conversation. And it's one of the reasons why I would choose ChatGPT over Grok. Now, the thing is, though, with Grok is that Grok actually pulls a lot of its information from the X platform. And so this is one of the differences, that, uh, distinct differences between Grok and ChatGPT. And one of the reasons that you might want to use one or the other is that uh, Grok actually has more up-to-date information, whereas there's a little bit of a delay when it comes to ChatGPT and the information that it has access to. So just as an example here, um, let's just ask Grok, do you keep a memory of our discussions. And uh, this is just kind of an example here of, of, of the many different things that you can com, uh, converse with Grok about. And uh, you can see here, no, I don't have the capability to maintain a memory of our discussions across different sessions. Each conversation starts anew, ensuring privacy and freshness in our interactions. However, within a single session, I can refer back to earlier parts of our conversation to provide more coherent and contextually relevant responses. So, Myself personally, you know, it, it, it's, it depends on what you find valuable. Uh, personally, I find the memory valuable because there are times when I want to refer back to a previous discussion that we've had. And if I have to type that in again and explain again to ChatGPT what it is that I'm trying to talk about, then it takes time and, uh, you know, it kind of is, is just not um, uh, very intuitive, you could say. 
Um, but those are kind of the distinct differences that I would say between the two of them. Grok has more up-to-date information, but ChatGPT carries a memory of its conversations. Another thing that uh, is important to point out between them is uh, the ability to create images. So you could see here that um, there is the option here to create an image and uh, you can just put in here um, anything you want, a, let's say, a futuristic city. And well, in that case uh, here, we gotta be more specific, an image of a futuristic, Hopefully I got that right. I didn't, uh, city, but let's go and just spell check that really quick and then hit send. And then, so that's kind of an example there. You have to be somewhat specific with Grok. You have to let it know that you want that image. And then here you go. You're going to start getting these uh, images here and the images you get from both Grok and chat GPT are really quite amazing. So let's just go over here and we'll do the same thing. An image of a, Okay, just put that in and there you go. ChatGPT is going to start generating that for us. Now, what you're going to find with both platforms is that if you're on the free version, there's only so many images that you can generate. And uh, at some point, ChatGPT is going to tell you you've reached your limit. And um, uh, even with the conversation, it's uh, working from two different models where uh, the uh, for the first um, part of your conversation every day, every 24 hours, it's going to be working with its more advanced model. But after a point, it will uh, d it will revert back to the previous model and some of its answers might not be quite as intuitive. Now, personally, I have found that I don't really see too much of a difference. I think that the previous model is still quite intuitive. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, um, certainly a limitation that could be possible, but yeah, you could just see there sort of the difference in the image quality. Um, now, you know, with either of them here, we didn't really specify, I could say an image of a, uh, of a realistic futuristic city and, and Grok kind of gave us something that looks a little bit more realistic, really cool results. And then here with ChatGPT, we got something that has a little bit more of an artistic flair to it. Uh, but yeah, you could see for yourself that, um, if you are interested in generating images, you can do that with both Grok and ChatGPT depending on how many images you are interested in generating, then that's where you might be interested in getting a subscription. So there are certain limitations with either platform. I would say that personally, I find ChatGPT a bit more dynamic and uh, there are issues sometimes I find with what I would say is questionable information. And I would say that uh, for both of these platforms and for uh, for for all the different AI uh, platforms, there is a question of the philosophy of the people who are actually building the AI. Um, how much of their own bias are they adding to the model? And I have found with uh, both ChatGPT and with Grok that the interesting thing with AI is that you can reason with it. You can offer your own perspective and say, well, what about this? And what about this? And oftentimes the AI will adjust itself based on your uh, criticisms, your observations. And um, this is where though I would say that ChatGPT has more of an edge because of its memory. So because of its memory, it has a little bit of a better time kind of identifying what your personal uh, views and philosophies are and kind of uh, um, uh, adjust itself accordingly. And, you know, that's um, an interesting thing to consider how AI in many ways, it does mirror the intentions of the user. So that to me is, is a very uh, interesting thing to, uh, to, to, to think about. It can be a little bit concerning as well, because depending on who it is, who's controlling the AI will determine, I believe how it is that it responds to certain things. So this is uh, one of the reasons why I do think it's important that AI is available to everyone. 
uh, because if it was only available to certain people, then who knows how they would inject their own bias into the AI. But because AI is generally available to everybody, then uh, there's a little bit uh, better of a chance that the AI is sort of pulling from everybody's various opinions and trying to come up with something that's more of a, uh, a universal uh, approach, I suppose you could say. But there's a, a whole rabbit hole that we can go down there. At the end of the day, as far as the comparison between ChatGPT and Grok, uh, I would say that Grok is something that I would use um, in a pinch really quick. If there's something that I'm, I'm curious about, then I might uh, to ask Grok about it. But generally speaking, uh, if I was going to pay for a subscription, then I would probably pay for ChatGPT over something like Grok. And that's my personal opinion. Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more helpful tips.